Well, hello guys, David Vos here. Hope you're having a wonderful day where you are. It is a beautiful day here in paradise, but it looks like war is creeping up on us. Friends, a lot of things going on. It's like it could it could start the whole thing. Nuclear missiles could be flying tomorrow or tonight. Or this may go on for several more months, but it looks like the United States is trying to push Russia into all-out full-scale war. I think that, of course, this is a theater, and they have a, an exact date on which they're going to start the war. I think they know exactly where they're going to hit. They know what it's going to look like. They know how they're going to report it in each of the countries. It's just a big theater. According to the BBC, that claim that this whole thing is a theater, which they claim that we have a theater of war. They've been saying that for years, but maybe that's just a bad, poor choice of words. But according to the BBC, the Ukraine war is now possibly false because there are viral claims saying that it is fake. The first anniversary of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine has led to a spike in false claims about the war on social media, with some posts gaining millions of engagements. A number of U.S. right-wing accounts, the right-wing accounts, with large followings, posted a series of baseless claims that suggested the entire Ukraine war might be a hoax, perpetrated by Western media and governments. Those spreading the most viral claims included some who had previously been suspended from Twitter. Oh, well, then they're probably, you know, I can't believe them. And allowed back onto the platform following Elon Musk's takeover. Okay, so they've got this post here with this big red faults across it. And this is what they, they flagged. I'm sick and tired of the lack of footage of the Ukraine war. I worked in cable news. I am initiated. If it bleeds, it leads. Where is the war footage? Where are the Pulitzer Prize winning photos? This smacks of a scam and the American people are fed up. Produce the documentary evidence. Or already. We're not sending our sons and daughters to die over a corrupt, undemocratic country's politics without documentary evidence. We don't give up <clears throat> about your Russian boogeyman. This is not a matter of U.S. national security, so put up or shut up. And they say, that's false. Well, how is that false? All he said was, show us some pictures. That's not false. One false claim that has been gaining traction on Twitter and elsewhere suggested that the entire war has somehow been faked. As evidence, some prominent right-wing accounts in the United States cited the supposed lack of footage from the front line. A commentator complained about the lack of war footage, a viral post saying it smacks of scam. Another Twitter influencer with 1.4 million followers claimed there was no footage and no detailed updates of the war. That post was later shared by former U.S. National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, who added, I double dare anyone to say he's wrong. Huh? Michael Flynn? Oh, oh yeah, that's that guy that was on Trump's side. However, the war in Ukraine has been well documented by you <laughs> and it's been talked about. But like the guy says, where's the footage? Alongside eyewitness accounts, there's been ample footage from the Ukraine front line filled by the BBC and other global broadcasters. Well, a lot of that's CGI. I've seen some CGI that they feed into our accounts. And they've also examined false narratives about some of the country's conflicts key events. There's also evidence from governments and agencies around the world that confirms the war is real. Yeah, all the governments are in on it because this is why it's happening, why the world's coming to an end because they have the, the control over every government on the face of the earth. They've created a society with 33 degrees and about 30 of those degrees mean nothing. Those are for the peasants that are in the police force the people that are in the media, the people that are running the street cleaners on the streets or whatever. It's just a, 
a big pyramid scheme, this society. And those who need to know are at the top and they don't talk because they're under oath. And those people are running the governments. And it's just a big family affair. So there is probably not going to be any evidence. And the news we've seen many, many times is Project Mockingbird. They just parrot what the other news organizations say. And the pictures could be green screen. They could just be, as we saw here in this country for years, they do drills on the street and then claim it was a shooting but it's just a drill. Yeah, stuff like that's going on everywhere. Two days after Russia's invasion, footage of a high-rise apartment building in Kiev with a huge hole in it after it was hit by a missile was widely shared around the world. Oh, there's one building with a bomb that went off. Well, they might have blown up an old abandoned building and took pictures of it. That's the point. Reporters covered the aftermath of the damage. You see, I don't necessarily think there isn't damage. World War II, we saw the pictures of the that whole street was all demolished, but we kept seeing the same pictures over and over again. Nagasaki, Hiroshima, we saw a couple of pictures, that's enough. They stage a big area, they tell, evacuate a certain area, and they bomb it, and then they say, look, remember those pictures we saw of Syria? It was always the one area. You notice how China's got this whole area where they build the city, there's nobody living there? Same thing with North Korea or South, something like, yeah, North Korea. Maybe they're building these fake cities so they can bomb them and say there's a war going on and film it. I don't know, friends. I mean, literally something like that happens all the time. We don't even know if that thing we call the White House or the Capitol building has any senators or congressmen in there, whether they just go to a movie studio and they have some kind of a set with gavels and they argue and yeah, it's a movie series. It's reality TV. You see families arguing about things. How can you argue about your personal life on television? Set, action, take one. Okay, you son of a bee wax her all and she rips her dress and they scream and one rolls down the stairs and yeah, there's a mattress at the bottom, but you know, it's all fake. And even the court cases are fake. Remember that mm, two, three years ago, it was that young man that was in that riot down there in uh, St. Louis and, and he had a D.U.N. and they he shot somebody or whatever. They said, took him to court and it was broadcasted all over the world. Well, that was fake because that young man was one of these Bavarians actors. And we've showed, I can't say much more about that here. So anyway, I don't know, maybe it's all fake. But take a look at this, France 24, truth or fake? The man in this video is an actor, but it does not mean the Ukraine war is being staged. Oh, okay. Even the president of the Ukraine, Zelensky, is an actor. Did you know that? He's a paid movie star. He's been in acting roles in theater and movies for years. He is an actor by trade. Wrap your mind around that one. Since the start of the war in Ukraine, repeated false claims have appeared on social media, alleging that the entire conflict is being staged. France 24's fact-checking team debunked the latest example. Two videos that show a man in Ukrainian army uniform being filmed as he appears to act out a scene on the battlefield. Really? Let's watch that. Well, it won't play. Well, I went looking for that, see if I get it to play on something else. And I noticed Israeli army, women in photo are actresses, not soldiers. Hmm. Be careful with this nurse's testimony. So don't believe the nurse, believe the government. The idea of not recruiting Ukrainian soldiers. Okay, well, we'll believe you. So, there's a lot of stuff that people are claiming are fake. You know, by the way, there's something that I'm going to be doing. There's a subject I'm going to be delving into here. About whether or not 
all of Greek history or mythology is fake. Well, we've been talking about how it, it describes the story in the stars, but perhaps they just wrote their history fake based on the characters in the stars. Well, maybe Abraham's fake too. Maybe they did the same thing. Remember, the Bible and Greek mythology was written at Alexandria at the Great Library by individuals like Pliny and Josephus and Philo and Plutarch and all these poets. They were priests there at the temple and they were commissioned by the government to write history. And they would make up stories based on the stars. Now, that may be true of a lot of these individual countries, whether that means it's false or not, or if it, you know. But what's interesting is I was noticing that in the Greek history, the actual history, not the mythology, all the characters have names that we don't know. We just think it's a name. But actually, if you listen, it's really in English that word has come down to us. And I think that we need to look at those names as descriptions and that may not even be people like some guy named Simplicitus or, you know, it's like saying, okay, the bad guy said to the good guy and the scary guy said to the big mean guy. I mean, like what these guys names were that maybe this just a, like Greek mythology. These names are like heaven and earth. They're the deities, right? The sky and the hell. And, you know, so it's just a story about things well, we'll look into that. But I'm beginning to really wonder whether everything we've ever heard, everything we know, everything we're doing is a big fake. Anyway, I digress. What I do know is they're orchestrating the fall of the world, the collapse of society. And friends, I don't think anybody realizes yet that we're talking about well, they put on the Georgia Guidestones that there'd only be 500 million people left. And they posted some crazy website that everybody's talking about. Even uh, John B. Wells on the biggest radio, syndicated radio program in the world. I When I went on his program, I told him about, he said, yeah, they, they're telling everybody about that. They, they've seen that. And that obscure website says, that the world will be depopulated in 2025 by like 80, 90%. So, they're planning on it. The epidemics, I mean, the, the 2021 or whatever, the CO, you know, thingy, that was an, uh, just a trial run. There's probably going to be, they have to, get control of the doctors and make new laws that say that we can put you in a FEMA camp if we feel it's important enough and we can curtail traffic and we can take away your GEUNs if we have to or we can take away your money or your or your family or, or take you to a FEMA camp or take away your rights and freedom. So we got to have a trial run to show you we're the boss. And I think there's other reasons for that, but it's definitely some kind of a trial run experiment on us. And when the next one comes, it's going to be 10, 20 times worse. Remember the Whitewater with Bill Clinton. That was a trial run for the 2008 crash, market crash. So the COVID thingy was a trial run for something that's about to happen. I noticed that throughout the Psalms and the Bible, it keeps talking about the latter day and the time of trouble and then, uh, a bunch of plagues and how we're going to be delivered from the plagues. Even the book of Revelation talks about these plagues that are going to be coming and they still wouldn't repent, right? What is a plague? I don't know, but everybody's saying they're coming. Just to say, pay attention. But I think they're orchestrating everything and it says literally in the book of Revelation, the Almighty puts it into their hearts to destroy the harlot and burn her with fire. And I believe the harlot is Jerusalem. And so I think they're orchestrating a big war. Russia's part of it. The United States part of it. Europe, China. They're all going to come surround Israel and just destroy the entire Middle East. 
and out of the ashes they'll make something new. I guarantee it. If you're in the Middle East, I'd get out now. If you're in anywhere near a city, I would get out of there now and get into an area where there's less people, get some property and prepare. Store up some food, friends. And I mean today. We haven't got even but hours or, you know, maybe a few days. We're going to be going into World War III. And when that happens, it's not just going to be war over there. There's probably going to be bank closures and collapses and no money and no, no grocery markets open. You can't get gas. You're stuck in a city. We take it to a film. I mean, look, this could really get bad at some point. So just to let you know. But this is now the time when the whole phoenix bird is burned up in the ashes. And then they're going to recreate, they believe, the world. But, you know, you don't recreate a new world in a day. You have to repopulate the world. There's a lot that goes on. Remember the flood of Noah's day? It probably took hundreds of years before cities began to be formed again. We're talking about a complete overthrow of the present world, just like the Atlantis that fell. And what's going on today? Well, we got war. Putin is revising Russia's nuclear doctrine due to current realities. So they can strike uh, for more reasons because at the moment, it, I, I'd have to say that the United States probably would have already struck if somebody had been doing what we're doing to them. Uh, Russia blames the United States for barbaric Ukrainian attack on Crimea, summons ambassador. Well, let's look at that. Russia blames U.S. Russia summoned the U.S. ambassador and vowed retaliation Monday after blaming Washington for a deadly strike on a strategic port in occupied Crimea, claiming U.S. supplied missiles were used in the attack. The strike left at least four people dead and more than 150 injured in one of the biggest attacks on the Russian annexed peninsula in recent months. Russia's defense ministry said four U.S. provided army tactical missile systems, rockets, were intercepted over the city of Sevastopol. But fragments from the fifth rocket led to numerous casualties among the civilians on the ground. Yeah, so when you knock these missiles out of the air, it doesn't stop these shards and pieces of the missile from coming down and killing people. We have to keep that in mind. But all flight missions for the American operational tactical missiles are entered by American specialists based on U.S.-owned satellite reconnaissance data. The ministry said in a statement, therefore, responsibility for the deliberate missile attack on civilians in Sevastopol lies primarily with Washington, which supplied these weapons to Ukraine, as well as the Kiev regime from whose territory this attack was launched. You know, I know that's true, guys, because some years ago, I lived in the other side of New Mexico. There is a um, an Air Force base there. And, it, well, it's a uh, special ops base. And my daughter was dating one of the pilots there. And he was telling her that he sat there in a room. That's what his job was to sit in this little room. And he had this button and he could see what was going on on the ground in Iraq. And he could watch people come out of a building and he could just push a button and they would be shot. He had that, that ability. That's what his job was. He was, he, he wasn't in Iraq in an airplane he was here in the United States, in New Mexico, in a little building, playing on a, what looked to be like a game, you know, digital game machine, whatever you call these things, with joysticks. And he was shooting people and assassinating people, basically, at will. And I don't know how many people realize that we have that ability. We don't even have to go over there. We can push buttons from here. 
Ah, oh, it's just a big mess. I mean, this isn't going to go away very soon. Why the West is so alarmed by North Korea and Russia taking their relationship to the next level. I understand that they're supplying each other with weapons. They're joining forces, you might say. I really have a lot of doubt on that. I really have always thought that Kim Jong-un served the purpose for everybody, Russia, China, and the United States. Their flag, after all, is red, white, and blue. L.A. Ballerina goes on trial for treason in Russia after donating funds to Ukraine. Oh my, we are really fighting a spiritual warfare. Can you imagine being here in America and you donate some funds to some cause or whatever, and now she's in Russia in prison or something? I don't know what the story is. I don't want to know, but it it just it you know that little girl doesn't look like she needs to be in the gulag to me anyway. Bombarded but unbreakable, Ukraine's second city relieved by Biden's shift on U.S. weapons. Hmm. Kim Jong-un and Putin signed mutual defense pact at North Korea summit. The WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange reaches plea deal with the United States, allowing him to go free. Huh? <laughs> yep. The guy that never did anything wrong has been in prison all this time because he told the truth about what our government was doing. He's in prison all this time. He's finally let go and nobody cares. Just fine print at the end of some news cast or something. New video shows American and two other hostages during Hamas abduction. But by the way, I, I don't believe, I really have my doubts as to whether WikiLeaks was um, a legitimate thing either. Because remember that came at this crazy moment in time and it exposed Hillary Clinton and everybody knew she was a uh, terrible person but yet they never convicted her nobody goes to jail because these actors are all part of the family they don't go to jail but they can play all the bad parts and the good parts but Jeffrey Epstein and all the other players they're all just as bad they're all playing I mean Hugh Hefner was a hero for years you know but he's got the tunnels under his penthouse mansion, just like the organizations have their tunnels. There's tunnels under Jehovah's Witnesses headquarters. There's tunnels under the Mormon temple. There's tunnels under the Vatican. There's tunnels going down from the Washington, you know, and, and these tunnels go down into this vast city where they're taking children and doing whatever you can imagine with them. So WikiLeaks coming out and exposing the whole thing. And I don't really buy that he ruined Hillary's chances. I think they're, they're, they're staging all of this. It's all a theater. And they want you to hate Biden because he's a bumbling old idiot. And Pelosi is drunk and well, she can't even stand there and hold a conversation. She's stammering like she's drunk. And so everybody's going to hate that. But of course, they're going to bring in people from other countries that don't even know what the news is saying, They let alone watch it because they can't speak English. And they're just told to vote for Biden because then he'll leave the door open for him down at the border. So there you go. Police patrols increased after protesters clash outside Los Angeles synagogue. Yeah, they're going to have all kinds of staged riots and everything. Minnesota Dam faces imminent failure. Beluga whales evacuated from Ukraine in complex mission. Huh? Whales? So they got time to, to be humanitarians, right? In the middle of the war. In Ukraine, right? They, they got so much time on their hands. They're saving the whales now. Who cares about the children? Russia and North Korea pledged to defend each other. It shouldn't be underestimated. Oh, I don't think so. Arms race to supply warring sides in Russia... Ukraine conflict. King Jong-un greets Putin as he arrives in North Korea. Boxing champ Roy Jones Jr. says his son died by suicide. Oh man. Roy Jones Jr. was like arguably the greatest boxer of all time. Maybe not that great, but real close. Probably in the top 20 or something. 
Judge halts further student loan forgiveness under part of Biden's new payment plan. I don't appreciate your tone, Judge, in Trump documents case reprimands prosecutor. Puerto Rico Power Company suspends $65 million worth of maintenance projects, sparking outcry. More news. Oh, there's more. Putin arrives in North Korea for a rare visit, praising Kim Jong-un's support for Ukraine war. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, they would, wouldn't they? They are on each other's side. Putin appoints relative in defense ministry shakeup. Well, if I was the ruler of the world, I guess I'd appoint some of my relatives too. Putin to visit North Korea starting Tuesday for talks with Kim Jong-un. If we stop, we die. Ukraine's struggling soldiers emboldened by renewed U.S. support. Espionage trial of U.S. reporter Evan Gershovic. Gershov... Gershkovic? Govicki? Oh, Vicky. The Vicmeister. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Is it like Hergovic? Uh. There's a lot of Vicks over there. <laughs> and I never know whether they're Russian or German. But anyway, Russia began behind closed doors in June 26. 80 countries at Swiss conference agree Ukraine's territorial integrity must be basis of any peace. In other words, there is no peace because Russia is not going to give up the Ukraine. This is crazy. Trump's possible return looms over deals Biden cut at G7 summit. Guys, I don't even think there's going to be a, an election. If or if there is, I mean, then we may if we're in war, there probably wouldn't be a, an election. I think they're going to have two governments. I think the stuff we've been hearing about this constitutional government, they might pretend that they got one. And Trump might run the new constitutional government out of uh, Mariago or something like that. And we could have civil war. We could have some of the police that back Trump surround Florida and Texas. And, and it would be like a standoff. We have two countries, you know, we'd have... Um, most of the country would be Republican and then there'd be this little breakaway state, California and New York or something. And all the liberals can go there. Who knows? Putin pledges truce if Ukraine exits occupied areas and drops NATO bid. Ukraine gets $50 billion loan from Russian assets. Signed security pact with U.S. What? Oh, I don't know. Anywho, that's the news. I think we'll leave it there. You guys have a wonderful evening. The Lord will bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.